You've probably heard about Bitcoin and, by now, how much money it's worth. But have you actually wondered why cryptocurrency is valuable at all? Why are people willing to spend upwards of $50,000 on a Bitcoin? Why do people use Bitcoin Cash in places like St. Kitts as a replacement of dollar bills? And why is Elon Musk talking about putting a doge on the moon? Is there anything that actually makes these cryptocurrencies valuable beyond the fact that people are willing to pay for them? That's what we're gonna be talking about today, specifically why cryptocurrency has value to begin with and seven applications of cryptocurrency that you just can't do with regular money. Especially because a lot of people who are very successful, very smart, very wealthy, Buffett for example, call cryptocurrency a Ponzi scheme, saying that cryptocurrency like Bitcoin has no value at all. Warren Buffett has called cryptocurrency a delusion. Bitcoin has no unique value at all. It doesn't produce anything. You can stare at it all day and no little Bitcoins come out or anything like that. It's, it's, it is a, it's, it's, a, it's a delusion basically. <laughs> Schiff has called cryptocurrency a Ponzi scheme. But, and I didn't buy it. But the mistake that I made in not buying it, I just did not see the potential that it would catch on, that so many people would be taken in by it and be fooled by it, such that, you know, you could have this gigantic, you know, pyramid, Ponzi, chain letter type of effect. Even the Bank of England has said that Bitcoin has no intrinsic value at all. Bitcoin isn't like a company. It doesn't produce widgets. It, there's nothing that is made from it. So many people, as we've seen, say that cryptocurrency, Bitcoin and all the rest, has no intrinsic value. What does intrinsic value actually mean? Now we can look at this through a traditional financial perspective, or we can look at it through a philosophic one. Basically, intrinsic value means that something is good just because it is. You can't distill it down any further. An extrinsic value is something that is good because of something else. Things taste good because they give you happiness. Happiness is the intrinsic value. Things tasting good is extrinsic. Things that taste good, like tea, are extrinsic. So for the sake of this, the question really isn't does Bitcoin not have intrinsic value because money doesn't have intrinsic value, gold doesn't have intrinsic value, things that you like in your life, such as coffee or tea, don't have intrinsic value. Even big companies like Tesla and Apple making widgets and cars and all this stuff, they don't have intrinsic value either. So for us, the conversation really isn't about intrinsic value, it's about value. This painting by Jasper Jones, by the way, is worth more, has a lot more value than the materials that it's actually made of. Turpentine soaked cloth, crusted, dried up oil paint, but the ideas that it carries as a cultural object give it value. Gold is exactly the same. It's not a very strong metal that can be used in construction. It's not conductive the way that, let's say, copper is. It's not sterile the way that silver is. So why is it that gold is one of the most valuable things in the world. It's because the properties of gold make it more valuable than what the use case of the raw material is. For example, it's chemically stable, so it won't degrade over time. It's hard to inflate because it's very difficult to dig up new gold and so far alchemy hasn't proven to be very effective. And on top of all that, it happens to look pretty. People realize that gold was a better currency than things like seashells. The value of gold is in the idea that it works really well as money. And that's basically what US dollars are. The reason that this has value is because we have trust in it. We have trust in the government that prints it. We have trust that if we take this piece of paper and give it to a company like Coca-Cola, they will give us a can of pop back. Over time, the purchasing power of this will obviously decline as more of them come into the world and we inflate the economy even more, but so long as that rate isn't too dramatic and as long as we can predict the rate, then we're okay with it. Now for me personally, a lot of my trust in that system has kind of evaporated over the past few years. But not just me, people who value cryptocurrency as a medium of value better than these pieces of paper. Did you know that 40% of all of these pieces of paper that have ever been printed in all of American history were printed within a year in 2020. That's a really big deal and a really big breach of the trust that at least I had in these retaining any form of value into the future. This government printed money known as fiat is not backed by anything. It's not backed by gold. It's only backed by the trust, by the value we put in it. And Bitcoin is the same way. It's not backed by any gold or any physical 
item. But that's okay, just like a piece of art or a piece of fiat currency, it's perfectly fine that something doesn't have intrinsic value. Now with all that out of the way, let's talk about seven reasons why people value cryptocurrency, why people are willing to pay so much money for it. Because it is pretty funny to think that there are people in the world that are willing to take 50,000 of these little scraps of paper and trade it for effectively a digital nothing. It is a funny thought. The first reason is because cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin or Bitcoin Cash or Ethereum are person to person. If you were here in this room with me, I could take this dollar bill, this scrap of paper, and I could hand it to you, and then you would own this dollar bill. There's no one here that could stop that from happening. But where that gets complicated is when you're not here in the same room as me. If I wanna take this $1 bill and give it to you, there's a number of steps that it has to go through, including a number of people that have to approve what I'm doing as well. If you have a car, there's a number of places you could drive that you shouldn't drive to. Criminals drive to banks to rob them. Does that mean that we as a society should make it <laughs> enforced that if you get in your car, you have to tell the government where you intend to drive to? Of course not. And you might think, well, there's never gonna be a time where I have trouble through the internet giving someone a dollar bill. Well, it turns out that that's not true. There have been plenty of examples where people have wanted to send money to someone else on the internet, but payment processors have blocked them, and not for things that were illegal. A recent example is with Kyle Rittenhouse. Now, regardless of how you feel about Kyle Rittenhouse, when Kyle Rittenhouse was arrested, a GoFundMe was put up for people who believed in his cause, believed that he was innocent, were able to donate money to. However, credit card companies actually blocked those transactions from going through. That would have been the same as people wanting to go to drive to the courthouse to protest him being arrested. And when they get into their Ford, their Ford says, hey, no, sorry, I won't drive you there. It's not Ford's decision what you support politically, and it should not be your payment providers or bank that tell you what you can and can't use your money on, especially if it's legal. Fiat currency is very easily censored, especially when we're talking about online transactions. Reason number two that people give value to cryptocurrency is that cryptocurrency is borderless. If I wanted to give this $1 to someone in Cambodia, that would be a major problem. The reason is, unless I'm willing to get on a plane and fly there and give it to someone, let's say a friend, that would be really expensive. Now you might say, okay, well, just use PayPal. The problem is that PayPal is blocked in Cambodia. Cryptocurrency can go to places in speeds that fiat currency or even gold just can't go. The third reason is that cryptocurrency lets you spend any amount of money you want or send any amount of money you want without red tape. I'm in the process of opening a cafe, and to do that, I need a bunch of equipment. One of the things that I bought was a really expensive matcha grinder from Japan, and it cost $15,000. The complexity <laughs> and difficulty for me to take money from my account and send it to someone for this transaction of this equipment, the number of people that had to go through it and approve it, the red tape was a nightmare, and unfortunately, that only scales as the amount of money increases. With a cryptocurrency like Bitcoin Cash, it's just as easy to send $1 as it is to send $100,000, just as it is to send $100 million. With fiat government money, that's simply not possible. And with gold, don't even think about it. Reason number four that cryptocurrency has value is you're in control of it. In 2021, in Myanmar, the military seized control in a military coup, and the monetary system was crippled as a result. Banks stopped people from taking money out and had lines that they would wait all day in just to get out $120 worth because that was the maximum that they'd allow you to take out. To make it worse, randomly selected ATMs were filled with money, so the ATM near you may or may not be it. You might have to travel hours to get to an ATM and then wait hours at that ATM to withdraw money, assuming there's any left. Philosophically, I don't like the idea that my money, my time and effort that I convert into these dollar bills can be stolen from me. It's really sad and it's not just in Myanmar where we're seeing that today. Number five, people like cryptocurrency is because it's resistant to hyperinflation. You probably heard stories about in the 1920s, the Weimar Republic. After getting their first paycheck, they were actually given time off of work 
to go spend the money because by the afternoon, the purchasing power of their wage would have gone down so much they might not have even been able to afford bread. In fact, firewood was worth more than the pieces of paper that were used to represent money. So people would literally burn money because it was cheaper than burning firewood. We see this happening in Venezuela today where they take their currency and literally delete zeros off of it to try to control the hyperinflation. And guess what? It's not working. Cryptocurrency is very new. And we don't know what things will look like 10, 20, 30, 40, 100 years from now. Bitcoin and Bitcoin Cash both have 21 million coins that will ever exist in the world. USD will continue printing billions and trillions more units over the next, who knows, five, 10 years, maybe even just one year. So if I had $1 worth of purchasing power, I would choose to put it in something that can have no more units added versus something that can have billions or trillions of units added within the same period. Number six is there's less governmental and authoritarian control over cryptocurrency than there is over fiat currency. And China is a shining example of this. China is now putting on new restrictions for overseas withdrawals. And frankly, they're watching everything. This is where cryptocurrencies such as Monero can be so effective. Monero is what's known as a privacy coin. It's completely private, which makes it wonderful especially in places like China. The seventh reason why cryptocurrency has value is because it can be used for things like loans and gaining interest. So right now I'll use the example of me wanting to get a loan for my business that I'm opening soon. If I wanna buy another $15,000 matcha mill, which hopefully I'm good on now, then I would have to go to a bank. At the bank, they would look at my credit, which is a whole nother topic on the fairness of credit scores. I would have to trust and explain what I wanna do with the money and hope that they give me a loan. But what if I don't want to deal with them? What if I have a low credit score? What if the money isn't for a business? I just wanna buy myself a really nice couch. I'm a little short this month on money and there's no way I'm getting a bank loan for that. But with cryptocurrency, it's totally different. I can take the money that I have in cryptocurrency by using a platform like Nexo, I could go there, deposit my crypto, and have them hold that as collateral while I get a cash loan out, which I can use on whatever I want. Repay the cash and my crypto is released back to me. And on top of that, any crypto that I deposit in there, I will earn passive interest on. By the way, if you'd like to learn more about Nexo and earning passive interest, you can click on the link in my description for Nexo to create an account. I'm not sponsored by them, but I do use them and I love the platform. It's a great way to take the crypto you have and earn passive interest on it. So through these seven reasons, you can see why people give cryptocurrency value, why people are willing to give these up for these magic numbers on your phone or computer. It's because there are ideas and features that are inherent in cryptocurrency that simply do not exist, at least not to the extent that they exist in regular fiat currency. Cryptocurrency is person to person. It's borderless. Sending any amount works on it. You're in control of your own funds. You don't have to worry about things like hyperinflation, depending on what coin you pick. There's no authoritarian control. And there's financial options like loans and interest that simply don't exist to the extent that they do in the old school form of currency. Crypto is a new thing and there's always risks associated with it. We don't know what cryptocurrency is gonna live out. In 10, 20 years from now, we might find that the biggest cryptos like Ethereum simply vanish into nothing. We might find that new cryptocurrencies that haven't even been invented yet become a world cryptocurrency. So it's not all sunshine. It's not all rainbows. There is going to be risk involved. But to answer the question on why people use cryptocurrency, why cryptocurrency has value unlike what institutions like the Bank of England say, I think we can get a good idea by looking at these properties we've gone over. If you're new to crypto, it can be super overwhelming. That's why I put together a video, which you can check out here, on Bitcoin for beginners. It's a journey of someone who's never used cryptocurrency before, getting a wallet, setting it up, and using it, all within one fun video. That's it for now. Thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. It can be scary to get into crypto, but for me anyway, the benefits far outweigh the costs. Just like there are many different countries that all have their own unique currency, in crypto, there are many individual cryptos. All of them have different properties. All of them have pros and cons. And if you are not new to cryptocurrency, leave a comment below and let me know what your favorite cryptocurrency is, at least right now watching this video. Have a great day, guys. I'll see you next week.